The Soul Redeemer, Chapter 12, Jumping In Nicole had laid down for a quick afternoon nap and woke from the dream in a cold sweat. What did it mean? She had learned that God often spoke to her in dreams, and occasionally they were an attack from Satan. This one was so heavy she either needed to understand its meaning or needed to have it wiped from her emotions. As she was preparing a cup of hot tea, trying to shake off the disturbing effects, a car drove up her driveway. Because of its isolation, it was unusual to have people come to the ranch without calling first. Nicole opened the door to see her friend Brenda stepping out of the car. Immediately, Nicole understood the dream. God had been preparing her for this moment. Brenda was still in her pajamas, her hair was a tangled mess, and her swollen red eyes caused her to look like she'd been in a fight. But because of the dream, Nicole knew this was a spiritual attack, not physical. She took her friend into her arms and led her into the house. They sat down together on the couch, and Nicole began to pray. After a moment, Brenda said, I don't know what's wrong with me. I've been pacing the floor since yesterday. Words and sounds keep coming out of my mouth that I don't understand, and it's not good. They're not tongues from God. I'm going crazy. I can't think straight. I feel like my body is being controlled by something, and I don't know what it is or what to do. The only thing I could think of was to come here, and so I did. Nicole hugged her friend, and with all the hope, comfort, and confidence that Christ had given her, she replied, You came to the right place, sweetheart. Jesus brought you here, and he will help us work through this together, okay? Brenda smiled faintly. Then a tortured look came over her face as a snake-like demon began strangling her. Nicole didn't see it with her natural eyes, but the Holy Spirit opened her spiritual eyes to see it, and she immediately bound it, took it captive in the name of Jesus, and commanded it in Jesus' name to release its hold so that Brenda was able to breathe and talk. For several hours, the Lord revealed the open doors in Brenda's life that had allowed this demon access to her body. Brenda began growing in the Lord. And now it was time for all the darkness to be exposed and eradicated. And it didn't want to leave without a fight. When Jake came home from work, he walked into the front door, saw what was happening, and went into the bedroom and closed the door. Nicole had been wondering how he would react to all this. But about that time, another demon raised its ugly head, and she knew that she needed prayer support. She found Jake and briefly explained what was happening. He willingly came and prayed with them. The battle went on all night as demon after demon was exposed. Its rights to Brenda were terminated. The curses were broken, and the demons were sent to the feet of Jesus. By morning, the Holy Spirit occupied the places in Brenda's soul and body where the demons had previously been. Even though she hadn't slept in two days, she looked a hundred percent better than when she came. The Lord had been true to his word. This experience was foundational in beginning the process of knitting Jake and Nicole's hearts together for the future that he had for them. Jake began to realize the importance of this type of ministry, and Nicole realized that Jake had been right about her inability to have people needing ministry in their home 24-7. She also realized that this was the first time that she had dealt so openly with demons and other people. She had helped others recognize, renounce, and destroy Satan's strongholds, but they had never manifested like these had. In a funny sort of way, it felt as if she had been given wings.